Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. I have something really exciting for you today, although ultimately it might do us all out of a job. So this is rtutor.ai and it is a site where you can ask for something to be done in R and it will do its best with its AI modeling to generate the code to do that thing for you. So it's got all of the built-in R data sets for you to be able to test, but you can also upload your own data. I've not yet tried my own data, but I have had a bit of a play with some of these data sets, and we will have a look at some of the examples. They also have some example requests here. So if we have a look at the dropdown, if we want a box plot with ggplot, we can just type in pretty much just regular uh, expressions here um, and it will generate the code for us and they've got quite a few examples here uh, we can see that some of them get pretty detailed the way that it seems to like instructions is broken up line by line uh, and so it will kind of work line by line changing things adding parameters and so on uh, and we can see we've got regression, we've got bar plots, we've even got neural network in there. Uh, it can call upon packages, so it's not just using the base R. And it is pretty good. Not perfect. Managed to generate some errors and confuse it a couple of times. Uh, but overall, it is pretty amazing. And so we're going to look at some examples. We're going to start with some really simple ones uh, and then some slightly more complex ones and also some vague ones as well. The data that I decided to use is the diamonds data set. And part of the reason I chose this was because one of the variables is called color. And that potentially is going to mess things up and confuse things where we might be trying to use color as the command for a graph but we could also be using it as a variable so I was curious to see how it responded to this we also have a range of numeric and categorical variables so I've got a couple just off screen here prepared and we're going to work through them and we're going to start with something very very simple uh, so we've got this variable x I want a box plot of x and so we hit submit and you might not have seen there, there was just a little chat GPT uh, box popped up very briefly. As you give it more complex things, it takes a little bit longer. And we can see box plot, diamonds, dollars, x, and here is our box plot. So that was pretty simple. Let's see if it can take that. And now we want a series of box plots, and we want to have color uh, as the splits is going to be multiple blocks plots uh, for that x variable by color. Let's see what it does. And again, no problems whatsoever. There is our color categories. Here is our box plots. But maybe I would like my box plot produced with ggplot instead of just base r. So again, just put again box plot x by color, specify ggplot, hit it, and we can see there it is, ggplot, done it exactly how we have asked. If we wanted to then specify grids or labels or titles, we can just specify that on additional lines, and so far it's been pretty good. So now I'm going to give it something a little bit more complicated. So GG plot. I want a bubble plot. Uh, I want color by price uh, and colored by cut. I've actually kind of muddled things up a little bit there. Uh, color by price shouldn't really work. I think what it's going to do is it's going to grab something else. But let's have a look. Uh, so we want the colors of uh, the the bubbles by cut. We want the size of them by depth. We want to add a title, we want to make the points a bit smaller because there's a lot of them, and I want a blue horizontal line uh, at the figure 10,000. So let's have a look what it makes of all of that. So you can see it's thinking a little bit longer. And so the one thing that it didn't do, and in fact it didn't do because it couldn't do, 
uh, is it couldn't throw color on the x-axis because it's categorical. And so it's had a think and it's gone, actually, uh, carrot by price is probably uh, more sensible what I meant. Uh, and so we can just say, yep, that's what I meant was actually carrot by price. Uh, we can see that it has done the coloring of the points uh, by cut. We can see that it's sized them by depth. It's added the title. Uh, it has added my blue horizontal line. Uh, it has has it shrunk the points. Uh, Geon point. Uh, we can see there that it's a little bit of position jitter, a uh, little bit of shrinking. So it has followed all of those instructions. The one that I messed up, it's done its best to try and guess. Uh, and that's pretty impressive. And I think this will be pretty handy as well. Sometimes when you're making a GG plot and you can't remember all of the different bits that you need to add to make some of those little changes, being able to throw it in here just makes life really much, much easier. Uh, and those of us who uh, might be uh, on the, uh, we are the R, I don't want to say gurus, but uh, more knowledgeable in R, this is really going to take some of that away, unfortunately. Um, so let's try some more. Let's go from graphs. Uh, let's see, I just want a cross tab. Let's make a nice simple cross tab, cut by color. And no problems there. Nice and easy for it. Uh, if I want a, maybe I want a summary table. This was an interesting one where whenever I put the word summary in there, it seemed to try and gravitate um, to quartiles, although it's actually quite interesting. The last time I ran this command, summary table of price, uh, it just used um, it just used the summary function. It didn't try and recreate its own, which is what it's doing here. Uh, so that's quite interesting that running the same command twice actually ended up with slightly different results. Let's hit again. And in fact, again, we did it then again. Um, and this time it gave us mean, min, max, standard deviation. So that is quite interesting to me that I've only been messing around with this for a little bit, uh, but we've seen that that model uh, is not returning exactly the same each time. So we're going to carry on. Uh, I think we'll just park summary stats there. Uh, let's suppose I wanted the mean and the standard deviation of price. Uh, I mean, I know we just had them. Uh, and so it's done it. Interesting that it's it's tried to shove them into a sentence here. So with ChatGPT, it's got the big language uh, bank. And so wherever it's sourcing it from, uh, there must be something somewhere where it's grabbing it. It's going, oh, you probably wanted that in a sentence, which we didn't request. Uh, and admittedly, we gave it very bare bones instruction here. Um, but interesting that it does present it like that. Okay, let's try some more. Uh, so mean price by color. Uh, very nicely done there. Uh, this is actually another interesting one uh, where the last time I tested this one, it didn't use tidyverse. It actually used the aggregate. Uh, so let's just add that in. So if I tell it I want to use the aggregate function. Um, so the last time I gave it mean price by color nothing else this is what it gave me it used the aggregate function to do it uh, let's take that off let's resubmit this time it gave us the t apply uh, so this is really i guess a good warning to you uh, but also a good thing to know that you're not always going to get that same piece of code uh, we can specify things. So last time around, when I wanted it using that tidyverse style, I specified it. 
uh, and we can see that it's gone back there to using the group by and summarize uh, which if you are uh, normally using tidyverse this is how you would likely be doing it okay so let's try a couple more things next one up i am interested in the correlations between x y and z which were some of those numeric variables and there it just grabs those columns takes the correlations between each of them nice and easy if we then want to do a regression so let's predict price with x y z color and the interaction between x and y and does that just as we would expect lm there's all our bits and pieces i guess i could have made it harder for it by instead of saying x uh x colon y for the interaction maybe if i just said x and y see whether it was smart enough to check that so everything so far has been pretty specific. I've told it I want a regression. I've told it I want a, um, told it that I want a particular type of graph. But what gets really interesting is where we start to ask questions that require some analysis, uh, but it it needs to solve it. Or normally, I guess, if you were a first year student. This might be something a first year student got asked is color independent of cut uh, and we put that in and it is looked it is seen that they are two categorical variables it has performed a chi-square test uh, it hasn't given me the conclusion of the chi-square test but it has run it uh, so that is pretty to me that even as someone with a stats and data science background that that is pretty impressive uh, that we can just give it that question it has gone to the correct test okay so we're going to do two more uh, so this one here let's ask it I want two different models of price so being I'm being intentionally vague we'll hit submit uh, what I've found is that if we ask it for models the default if we haven't specified is it's just going to jump to LM and it is going to uh, give us some linear models and here I asked for two different models it made me two different models so we've got one with carrot cut color and clarity and one that added depth and table on top uh, also interesting to note is that when I ran that exact same phrase earlier these were not the two that it gave me so I think the previous one it did first one was carrot and cut and the second was carrot cut and color so asking it to do the same thing multiple times giving us these different results so the last one I'm going to give it and I'm interested to see whether this is going to behave the way it did last time is what is the best model of price and let's just hit submit see what it does okay so I, I've tried that one a couple of times. One of the times it ran into an error. This time it ran a regression. It just jammed everything into the regression and then it gave us an R squared. So it didn't really answer this question particularly well. And admittedly, this is a pretty vague question. So maybe if we said find the regression model that has the highest R squared or something like that, then it might do a little bit better. Uh, but overall, we just hit reset. Uh, this is a pretty amazing site. Uh, if it's anything like ChatGPT, I don't know whether it will start to struggle as more people start finding it and using it. We can see here that Creative Commons license uh, for academics and nonprofits, and if you're a commercial user you should probably be getting in contact there uh, but this is pretty amazing I did not try using voice uh, brave automatically blocks access to the microphone and I am quite happy to keep it that way uh, but that could be something else you could try I would probably just type things in unless there was a uh, challenge that you had that made that hard 
So this is rtutor.ai. It is for really what is kind of just a, a first generation proof of concept kind of site. This is pretty amazing. Uh, so I would really recommend you have a go. Uh, and I think you will definitely get some value out of it. Hopefully this has been a interesting and helpful video for you. If you're not already a subscriber, hit subscribe, hit like, and I will be back soon with more videos about R statistics. Uh, and these days, increasingly AI as well. And I will see you soon.